Hello, hello everybody. Welcome back. If you watched yesterday's video, you've seen that we have been snowed in and iced in all a week this week. Well, on and off. Luke was able to go to work a couple days in between all that, but he was home several extra days this week due to the weather. So I decided to film a few of the meals that I made this week to be able to share it with you guys. Now, before the snowstorm, I did not run to the grocery store and stock up on anything. So this week of meals, we are using what we have on hand from the pantry, from our pantry, from the fridge, freezers, the food storage in the basement. We're just using anything that is at home that I can feed my family with. So let me show you what I've been cooking up. This is only a couple meals, um, but I hope you enjoy. We are starting out with a quick and easy breakfast. I found a new recipe for butter swim biscuits and I knew I had to give it a try. There's nothing better than some comfort food when it is snowy outside. So the recipe that I'm using, I will make sure to have a link down below for you guys. Now, since I was pantry cooking, I did not feel like going out to the store. So I was out, completely out of all purpose flour. <laughs> I don't know how I managed to do that right before a snowstorm, but it happened. So I'm actually using a self-rising flour instead. Um, so I just switched around the recipe for my needs, but I'll make sure to have it linked down below for you guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and mix the batter up. I also didn't have buttermilk, so I made my own buttermilk with regular milk and some vinegar. You can do that as well. So I just mix that together. That's what's in that back measuring cup there. And I just have it sitting to let it turn into buttermilk for a few minutes. And then we'll just add that in. But that's one of the good things about keeping basic ingredients on hand is that you can, you know, turn those basic ingredients into different things. Just because you're out of something that a recipe calls for, look into it. You might be able to change it, you know, based on the flour or, you know, make something out of the ingredients that you may buy like as a box or a can or something in the grocery store. When you keep basic ingredients on hand, it helps you be able to adapt and change recipes for your needs, especially if you're pantry cooking, regardless if you're needing to do it because you have a tight check or if you're snowed in like we were. I'm gonna take that biscuit dough and add it right on top of that melted butter. I'm gonna try my best to cut this into nine looking biscuits with a knife, and then we're gonna put this back in the oven and let it bake all the way through until they are golden brown on top. We're gonna make some hamburger gravy this morning since we were completely out of sausage. I used the last of my home canned sausage, so that's something I definitely need to add to my restock list. We don't eat sausage a lot just because we aren't huge fans, but I like to have it home canned because whenever I do wanna fix biscuits and gravy, it definitely helps me out because I already have it on my shelf and it's easy just to dump into the pan. But I went ahead and just browned up a little bit of hamburger meat and then I'm adding in a couple tablespoons of butter. We are just going to let that melt and then I'm gonna add some of my homemade pepper gravy mix. I have recently shared that with you guys and I'll make sure to have that video linked down below. This was this this pepper gravy mix is so easy just to throw in the pan like this, add your milk, quickly make a delicious homemade gravy. We love it. I'm gonna move that around for a couple minutes to cook some of that flour taste out and then we're gonna add our milk and then we'll just let it slowly thicken up and it will be a delicious homemade gravy. Mm -hmm. 
before I drop these eggs real quick, can we just take a moment for this cast iron skillet here? I'm so proud of this cast iron pan. I have really been working hard trying to cook more with cast iron and really get my pans in good shape. And I have to say, I'm so proud of this pan here. <laughs> so to go with our biscuits and gravy, I'm going to just fry up some eggs, scrambled for me and Winston, and Luke wanted some fried eggs. Everything was so good. We will definitely be making those biscuits again. They were delicious. Now don't get me wrong, I love my freezer biscuits that I keep in the freezer, but sometimes it's, you know, you wanna change things up and these biscuits were delicious. I have really been in the mood for hot ham and cheese and potato chips, so that is what I decided to fix for supper this night. I took my potatoes and just cut them really thin on my mandolin. I gave them a rinse, and now I'm just laying them out flat between two towels, and we're just gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes or so to dry out, and then we will just get them deep fried. Of course, you can oven bake these, or you can even pop them in your air fryer, whatever you decide. They're all gonna be delicious. And you can season your potato chips however you want to. There is a ton of different seasoning combinations that you can make, or even buy some already from the store. Um, that would, you know, whatever your favorite chips are, look up a different seasoning. I've seen some that are like Cool Ranch, um, you know, you could probably find one that's like Dorito. Barbecue seasoning would be good as well. I'm keeping it simple and just doing some salt and pepper. So I'm just gonna get them all deep fried. And then as soon as each batch comes out, I do like to go ahead and season them with whatever seasoning I'm using. I feel like it just sticks better as soon as it comes out. But homemade potato chips are one of my favorites. I always try to wait and cut my bread when it's cooled because it just cuts so much better and I feel like it keeps better in my opinion if you let it fully cool before you cut into it. But I have really been craving this hot ham and cheese. So as you can see, this bread is still hot, but it's all right. We're gonna go ahead and get these sandwiches going. I'm just gonna make, actually, Winston didn't want ham. He's not a huge lunch meat eater. So he's just getting a grilled cheese, but I did fix the hot ham and cheese for me. And then I'm just gonna get those toasted up on my iron pan there with some butter. And that was it. So simple, but absolutely delicious. It was everything I hoped for. So simple, but everything I hoped for. It's just, I don't know, it just hits different. When it's on homemade bread with homemade chips, it is just whole new level good. I don't know about you, but pizza is a weekly staple for sure in our house. We have some sort of a version of pizza. 
at least once a week. So this night we are making some focaccia pizza. If you have not used focaccia dough as pizza crust, I'm telling you, you are missing out. This is one of my favorite ways to make pizza at home. It is so good. So if you're not new here, you have already seen me make focaccia dough. I've shared that several times on my channel. I'll have a video linked down below showing you how to like start that. But this is the dough right here in this plastic container. That's the focaccia dough already ready. And it's about to do its final rise in the the pans that I'm going to be baking them on. So it's already been the two hours. I have been doing my stretch and folds for the past two hours. So now I'm gonna divide this dough up into three portions and then we're gonna go ahead and um, cover them. I'm gonna do one final stretch and fold in each pan and then I'm gonna cover it with a towel and let it sit for a remainder of 30 minutes. Then I'll bring you guys back. We'll flatten the dough out, add the toppings and get these bad boys put in the oven. I'm telling you, if you have not tried using this dough as pizza crust, it is one of my favorites. Now it's time to put together our pizzas. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press out the dough and dimple the dough until it gets to the full pan size. And then one of these is gonna be a meat lovers and one of these is going to be half cheese, half black olive. And then the third one on the big uh, baking stone will be pesto chicken. I have not tried pesto with the focaccia yet, which it was pretty good. Um, there's a couple things that I want to change ingredient wise um, for next time, but the pizza itself was really good. Um, uh, one of my recommendations, so we've been making pizza a long time, and one of the things that I have recently changed and realized that if I bake our pizzas on my cast iron pans and my baking stones, they turn out so much better than just doing them on a regular cookie sheet or baking pan. Um, so for now on, I'm definitely using cast iron and baking stones because they the pizzas just come out so much better. The crusts are amazing. We definitely like them so much better. But so I just thought I would maybe share that tip with you guys. Like we love homemade pizza. We make homemade pizza all the time. Like I said, it's like a weekly staple for us and we like changing it up. But I've noticed that if I do them in these pans or my baking stone, we just like them so much better. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys, but I'm just gonna put these together. Um, another tip that I like with, with using this dough when I do pizzas is I'll add my sauce on, and then I know it's gross for y'all to see, but I take my fingers and I dimple that sauce in, and it gets into those little bubbles and holes, just like the focaccia dough. And I really like how it kind of bakes up that way. So I know it's weird, but I promise my hands are clean. And I promise I washed my hands after this. But it just gets down in that dough, the little holes and stuff. And it's just so good.
Now I'm gonna put together the pesto chicken. This one was good. The, um, the ingredients wise that I was talking about a second ago that I would change is I would maybe add some garlic butter and also maybe do like fresh mozzarella instead of the shredded mozzarella because y'all know sometimes you just need fresh mozzarella. And I feel like the combination with the chicken and the pesto for this one, it's screaming fresh mozzarella. So we're gonna try this one again in a couple weeks and I'm gonna pick up some fresh mozzarella. But I'm doing this the same way. I'm gonna add on that pesto and I'm gonna take my fingers and I'm gonna dimple it into that dough. And then I just add shredded mozzarella and some Parmesan cheese. I'm adding in some cooked chunked up chicken and then I added in some spinach. Y'all can add literally anything. These, This was so good though. All three of these were so good, but I have to say that the Meat Lovers, this one right here, was our favorite. With all this cold, it's got me wanting some comfort food, so let's make some meatloaf. I've got a couple pounds of lean ground beef there, and I'm adding in a mixture of dehydrated veggies. I've got dehydrated mushrooms, onions, dehydrated spinach, and some dehydrated zucchini. I have just grounded that up and then I'm just adding that in. And then I like to add in some mustard, some W sauce. I'm also adding in a couple tablespoons of minced garlic. I season with my heart, paprika, garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and pepper. And then I like to do one egg per pound for my meatloaf. And then I also add in a little bit of breadcrumbs. I like to do either breadcrumbs or oatmeal. It just depends. But I find whenever I'm using lean ground beef that I like the breadcrumbs better than I do the oatmeal. So if I have like not as lean meat that I'm using, I will go for the oatmeal instead. I don't know, I just find that it soaks it up better, like soaks up the grease better with the oatmeal. So I just use whichever one depending on what meat I'm using. And that's it. I just mix it all up and then we'll just get it formed into a loaf and I get it put in a pan and then I get it put in the oven and I just cook it through. You just wanna make sure that it reaches the internal temperature of 155 for cooked ground beef. And I just cook mine at like 375 until it cooks through. Um, the topping part, I have kind of changed a little bit. I used to only add ketchup on top, um, but I started adding ketchup and a little bit of brown sugar together. Like my sister-in-law, she does that and everybody seems to like it. And then y'all know I still don't like ketchup, so I'll do barbecue sauce on a little bit. I actually wasn't able to film me adding the toppings for you guys because I was on the phone. Um, Luke had called and so I was double checking that he was good and on his way home. Um, but we always just do like three fourths of the meatloaf with that ketchup mixture. And then I do just a little bit for me with the barbecue sauce, but. That's it, and I have, you know how it is. You gotta sneak in veggies where you can, and so I definitely try to. That's another reason why I love keeping different dehydrated veggies on hand, because I can easily add them in to different recipes and sneak them in, and nobody ever knows. We went all out and had three side dishes. I couldn't tell you how long it's been since I fixed three side dishes with a meal. We were really feeling the comfort food. We were so over, this was towards the end of the week of us getting snowed in, and we were so over being stuck at home in this cold. <laughs> I'm so ready for summer. So we decided on some peas, some mashed potatoes, and some Parmesan roasted carrots. And these are a new side dish that I love you guys. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my potatoes peeled and cut up and get those going. And then I will show you guys how to put together these carrots. I 
I have already peeled and washed and cut up my carrots. I just cut them up into decent sized chunks and then I also cut them in half so that way they're half moons. I'm just gonna give them a drizzle with some olive oil. I like to do a few dashes of balsamic vinegar as well. I think it gives it really good flavor. And then I just use a like garlic and herb seasoning. You can you know play around with the combination, season with your heart. And then I'm just gonna give these a toss and we're gonna put these on a cookie sheet with parchment paper. And I'm gonna roast these in the oven at 400 until they are fork tender. For my mashed potatoes, I normally just do a little bit of butter, a little bit of milk. I'll put that on the stove for a little bit to heat up. And then I will add my potatoes in. I'll give them a season with some salt and pepper. And then I just hand mash them. My mashed potatoes are pretty basic, you guys. Now we're going to sprinkle our carrots. They are fork tender at this point. We're gonna sprinkle them with some Parmesan cheese. This is shredded Parmesan cheese that you can get in a bag or a container or whatever. You just sprinkle some on. As you can see, I do have them kind of like all placed together, but they do have a little bit of room where that cheese is gonna get melty and crusty on the pan at the bottom. And it's just so good. So you're gonna put these back in the oven and just let that cheese melt. I honestly left it in there for about a minute or two, too long. As you can see, um, the cheese got a little bit darker than normal, but y'all, these are one of my favorite side dishes. They're so good. The little sweetness from the carrot and then the saltiness from the seasonings and that Parmesan cheese is just so, so good. If you've not tried these, definitely give them a try. Here is my plate meatloaf, mashed potatoes, peas. So good. Thanks so much for spending some time with me in the kitchen this week, letting me share a few meals that I cooked up for my family. All of these were so delicious and so simple. All ingredients that I always keep on hand. That way it helps my budget and it helps me provide for my family when I don't want to get out in this snowstorm like we had all week. I really hope y'all enjoyed today's video. I hope it gave you some new meal ideas and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye guys.